there needs to be someone who is sort of the uh, keeper and reiterator of the vision. Uh, because there's just a ton of work to do. And a lot of times, you know, when you have to walk a thousand miles and you take the first step, it looks like a long ways. And it really helps if there's someone there saying, well, we're one step closer. You know, the, the goal definitely exists. It's not just a mirage out there. So in a thousand and one little and sometimes larger ways, the vision needs to be reiterated. I do that a lot. Well, I've forgotten how much work it actually is to start a company. It's a lot of work. And you've got to do everything. You've got to come up with a name. You've got to come up with a logo. You, I mean, in addition to designing the product, you've got to figure out what to design. You've got to figure out how you're going to get it to the marketplace. You've got to do a part number system. You've got to go get bank accounts. You've got to set up charts, general ledgers, get a management information system, get a little kitchen set up, get a coffee maker, all this stuff. All of those wonderful things that we got for just being are now sort of just old news. We are like every other startup. We've been a company now for six months, and uh, yes, you could say that, well, we had a, you know, a lawsuit for four of those months, and we had this and that, but the bottom line is the world doesn't really care. What the world cares about is what we produce. We've been a startup for six months, we've been spending money like we've been a startup for six months, and in some areas, we've, we've really produced a lot. Uh, we've got a lot to show for six months in some areas. In other areas, we don't have a lot to show for six months. So, I hope that throughout this retreat, we tend to make sure that our feet are on the ground and we realize that we're going to be judged like every other startup from here on out, and that is by what our product is and how timely we bring it to market. And getting a consensus on a common vision. We wanted people that were insanely great at what they did, but we're, we're not necessarily those seasoned professionals, but who had on, at the tips of their fingers and in their passion the latest understanding of where technology was and what we could do with that technology and who wanted to bring that to, to lots of people. So the neatest thing that happens is when you get a core group of, uh, you know, 10 great people, they, it becomes self-policing as to who they let into that group. So I consider the most important job of someone uh, like myself is recruiting. You've got to find what you love. And that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. And like any great relationship, it just gets better and better as the years roll on. So keep looking. Visionversity is a supportive and informative platform for those young people across the world who want to do new things in their life. It provides you a space where you find like-minded individuals and the opportunity to discuss with us directly. It's totally free of cost. Don't settle. Did you ever want to give up? Hmm? Did you ever think of giving up? Uh, oh, there were moments where it was pretty tough. There have been moments, but no, I don't think so. I don't mm. think so. The first year or two was the hardest. And there was no personal computer in 1975. It's, right. hard. it's, it's very hard to believe. Well, that's why we made one. Yes. We made one because we wanted one and we, we, there, there wasn't one, so we had to make one. Did you know that when you made the personal computer, though, that this would become a major industry? I mean, uh, did you know like this? No, no. It took about a year before we started to sense it. I had a partner named Steve Wozniak, right. who's a brilliant guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did most of the engineering on the original Apple One and the Apple Two. Mm -hmm. And after about a year, we showed it to our, we just made it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we showed it to our friends and they all wanted one. And so we were busy making these computers by hand for our friends, and we, it was taking all of our life, <laughs> uh, all of our spare time. Uh -huh. And so we decided we better manufacture a hundred of these to get, you know, so that we can not have to spend the rest of our lives mm -hmm. making them for our friends. And that's how we got into this. We didn't think about starting a company. We were just doing it for ourselves, and then our friends, and then the circle got bigger and bigger and bigger. Now there's 25 million people. So you were having fun. Oh, yeah. Well, I, we've always had fun doing this. So many young people are aspiring to become, you know, startup venture, um, you know, venture uh, friends, and then the circle got bigger and bigger and bigger. Now there's 25 companies and right. emulate um, something like Apple for themselves. And sometimes people come to me and say, "I want to start a company," and I say, "Why?" They say, "Oh, I want to make lots of money." <laughs> I say, "Forget it. That's not a good enough reason." Most people that have started companies because they want to make lots of money 
I haven't seen very many of those succeed. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that succeed are people that come, sometimes they don't even want to start a company, they just have an idea that they want to get out, expressed out into the world. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes they have to start a company because nobody else will listen to them. Uh, and in other words, when something's not quite good enough, do you stop and make it better or do you just ship it? You know, and everybody watches when you, to see how the senior management makes those decisions. And what we've tried to do is stop and make it great before we ship it. When we have problems, stop and fix them. And, and by example, uh, uh, you can say anything you want, but everybody watches very carefully when you're in a difficult situation, mm -hmm. what decisions you make, do what you, values you have. They would like to know how you do it and, you know, it's probably very not that's not that it's probably not easy to do yeah you know we try to hire really smart people but we have a very simple organization mm -hmm. and we try to focus and do very few things well and focusing is hard because focusing doesn't mean saying yes it means saying no so we say we, we decide not to do a lot of things so we can focus on oh. a few handfuls of things and do them well and um, I think uh, you know, everybody working in the company wants to do something great. Mm -hmm. They want to be excited about what they're working on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they want to be recognized for it uh, when, if they do a really great job. So we just try to allow people to do the best work of their lives mm -hmm. at Apple and get it out to 25 million customers that we have. Mm -hmm. And that's very exciting. And you know, when you're working on something, and you know, if this works out, up to 25 million people are going to use this. It's very motivating. And it's not just 25 million of our customers, but uh, other companies tend to follow us. You know, it takes them a few years, but other companies tend to copy what we do if it works. Right. And, uh, and so we can influence the whole industry. Mm. You know, I think about a year, two, three down the road. We have some projects at Apple that are sort of maybe four years down the road, five years, well, probably like three or four at the most, mm -hmm. because things change too much. You can be going down a path, you say, well, in five years I want to be here, mm -hmm. but then something new happens, and you, you just say, forget that, I want to be over there. So mm -hmm. most of this five-year planning that I've seen in my life, um, some of it's essential, but most of it uh, changes too quickly. So we tend to look three, four years. It's about as far ahead. Change or die, it's quick or dead, you know, <laughs> in, in a business like ours and in many businesses. And so sitting around and waiting for changes to happen, you know, not a good idea. So, you know, uh, first of all, you want to be really attuned to what's going on and understand all the change factors and how the environment's evolving and what you need to do to not only stay relevant, but increase your relevance to the customers that you're serving. And that may involve uh, some pretty radical changes, right, to, to your business. And speed is really important. Business cycles are only getting faster as the, you know, the role of technology plays a, a bigger uh, impact on, on, on everything. And so, yeah, you've got to kind of imagine what it's gonna look like in three or five years when you're successful and you better go make it happen now. If you're fearful and you don't like change, uh, don't go work in the tech sector, right? <laughs> because you won't be happy. I mean, we, we used to do this thing where we would, you know, uh, people would come in and they'd, uh, you know, apply to work and, and we'd say, hey, you know, how, how do you like ambiguity? You know, how do you like change? If they don't like it, well, don't even apply, right? <laughs> Just, you're not gonna be happy in, in a company like this. And look, I think the reality is that Every industry is becoming a tech industry and the rate of changes is increasing. And yeah, you just have to accept it. And, uh, you know, um, fear, uh, embracing risk, you, you have to get comfortable with all of that because, you know, that's the world we live in. You know, when I look out and see everything in the world becoming intelligent, by that I mean, you know, small microcontrollers and microprocessors embedded in every physical thing in the world, and all of those things becoming uh, connected with 5G and, and enormous amounts of data, and then the AI applied to the data. You know, the opportunity to sort of reimagine every part of the economy and society, and the cost of making these things connected, intelligent, coming way down. 
that is just going to provide a Cambrian explosion of opportunity as people reimagine all, all sectors of, of you know the economy and society. So yeah, I'm super excited about that. The last 30 or 40 years have been amazing in technology, but I think it's just a pre-game show to what is about to come. In our business, we try to understand what are the unsolved problems that customers have and how can we go address those? How do we inspire and engage our team members to be excited about the mission of what we're doing? Uh, how do we uh, you know, get organized to make sure we execute and deliver and uh, you know create value for our, for our customers which ultimately creates value for the company and uh, you know uh, I think it's really important to have a, a a purpose and idea that you're pursuing that people believe in that you know is is beyond just uh, okay we're gonna make these numbers happen or something right and, and when you put all that together and you're in a part of you know the industry or or society that that is that is you know meaningfully contributing people are energized by it they have a reason to get up out of bed every morning and and uh go make stuff happen don't be afraid <laughs> you know be, be willing to take risk you know imagine what the future could could be like and uh think about the opportunities differently you know than 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 others and uh yeah, we've 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 taken some pretty big uh, risks. People would say, as I thought about those moments, they didn't seem like enormous risks to me, uh, and you know, been generally proven to be correct about that. But uh, you know, everybody has a diff different risk appetite. Go back to the origins of the company and how we evolved, you know, at various stages in, into. Uh, you know, serving you know larger customers, expanding around the world, providing services to, to to our customers, expanding into the data center and cloud business, into software, going private, and you know buying EMC and VMware, and going public again. And you know, I think um, those are all pivotal moments, and and you know, it's 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 been a lot of fun. I think you have to be able to experiment and, and make mistakes uh, and you know I find the question a bit perplexing in the sense that you know uh, if, if you if you really don't know you know what, what, what it means to be an entrepreneur you know maybe you are one you know so, so I, I think there's a, a bit of kind of self initiative uh, and self starter you know that, that is incredibly important part of, of entrepreneurship I mean no one can sort of tell you how to do it you have to sort of have an instinctual uh, you know, feeling or an idea about about something, and you got to be passionate about it. I mean, I think people that look for great ideas to make money, uh, you know, aren't nearly as as successful as those who say, okay, what do I really love to do? What am I excited about? What do I know something about? You know, what's kind of interesting and compelling? If you look at, at our story, you know, at any point in in, in the process, you could have gone to uh, conventional you know experts. In fact, I remember. Uh, I won't name the the person because he's uh, he's still a extremely well known author of famous business books. Teaches at a very prominent university. You know, I showed up at a, at a conference uh, when the company was you know three or four years old, and you know he was sort of critiquing our business, and he kind of said, "Oh, this will never work." You know, and and uh, it was a common experience. I mean, when 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 we launched our business in the United Kingdom, uh, we had about 22 journalists show up. And it was it was sort of funny because it was about three or four weeks before we launched, we started actually selling, and the thing was just going like crazy. It was just growing so so fast, which is a good thing because when we had the launch, about 21 of the 22 journalists said, "Oh, this is a horrible idea. Never work in the UK. It's a completely American idea, uh, and you know don't even think about coming here. You should just pack your bags and go home." Um, Good, lucky for me, we'd already started, and, and so, you know, hey guys, love to entertain some more questions, but I gotta go back to the to the office because you know we're busy taking orders and you know making.